the writing of Jean de Larry is pretty significant in its own right. He was a French Huguenot who traveled to Brazil and, uh, and wrote a, an account of his uh, interactions with the Tupinamba uh, native tribe. And it's a remarkable um, uh, anthropological document, the, uh, the History of a Voyage to the Land of Brazil. He published it in, uh, in 1578. And it has uh, it, it's a remarkable account of the this voyage. He lived with the uh, tribal members for uh, I, I think a couple of months and got to know them and saw a lot of their uh, their um, uh, their habits and their culture and uh, and recorded them. Wrote all of these things down. He he learned some of the language and uh, and dealt with interpreters and was able to engage with them and come back and report to Europe at, uh, of the time. And uh, there is a a, a remarkable. Uh, professionalism about his uh, account that you don't find necessarily in like uh, Columbus's account who was really just always shaping his report around uh, trying to get money out of uh, out of the nobles back home the king and queen here Larry is uh, straight up just writing uh, writing down journalism quite frankly and the uh, the perspective he offers is fairly significant. The uh, as, uh, scholars have noted that as a uh, as a Huguenot, he is somewhat of an outsider already within uh, mainland French uh, mainline French culture, and so he brings that perspective of some. Uh, skepticism and objectivity to the uh, to the uh, to the observations of the natives, and it is not all just a tale of savages. He is remarkably self-deprecating from time to time. He gives uh, lively accounts of their culture, of their uh, their eating habits. Uh, there, uh, there are. He talks about tattoos. He talks about the way that they treat guests. He talks about. Well, he does address the cannibalism issue, uh, and uh, and and he the the portrait he describes, the portrait he provides of these people. Uh, shows uh, a, a remarkable well-roundedness. They come off as human beings and not just savages. They have uh, a sense of humor. They laugh from time to time, and it's really pretty, uh, pretty amusing to uh, to watch. Of course, the primary reason, well, for uh, in in literary circles, the primary reason for um, uh, for your, uh, checking out Larry, let's say, is really his uh, his audience because his work was read very widely back in France, but particularly by uh, Michel de Montaigne. As Michel de Montaigne is uh, is writing his essays, he is reading the uh, uh, he is reading de Larry's uh, voyage and developing his own ideas about well the cannibals and you can see in the uh, in the history that uh, de Larry uh, offers you can see the shadows of Montaigne's uh, focus passing by, particularly in stuff like obviously cannibals, but also coaches and the inconsistency of our actions, uh, a portrait of humanity as linked by a common humanity, uh, and one that uh, is somewhat irrespective of the great chain of being, let's say. Uh, there is a remarkable liberality of the perspective that, uh, that does come through. Um, the, this, the section law and or law and civil order among the savages, uh, begins with a, uh, quite remarkable little mention of, uh, uh, of, uh, the perspective of a man of the Renaissance. As for the civil order of our savages, it is an incredible thing, a thing that cannot be said without shame to those who have both divine and human laws, how a people guided so solely by their nature, even corrupted as it is, can live and deal with each other in such peace and tranquility. 
Well, is it a, a shame for, for whom? It's shame for the Europeans, let's say, because Larry is coming back from, uh, is contrasting them uh, to their perspective of Europe and particularly France and its, uh, and its treatment of people like Larry the Huguenots, so the persecution, the religious wars that have been just ravaging that continent for, uh, for the previous century. He is, uh, he is saying, well, they have, uh, over there, the, the natives, they have a, uh, um, they have a particular, uh, ability to get along with one another and yet they are not, uh, guided by, uh, by, by matters of theology quite so much, um, in, in their, uh, their dealings with one another and they are guided solely by their nature. The idea of, endowing humanity with a basic uh with the basic inclinations that uh make for getting along with one another uh it, it, without uh, without interposing some kind of divine law or some uh, some notion of dogma to which uh good people must ascribe and you get these little um uh, these little acknowledgments throughout, these little slips that come out as he is suggesting without necessarily criticizing European culture so directly, uh, he's offering up the contrast. He says, you know, with them, I only saw them fight, uh, I only saw them fight with each other twice, uh, which is a, uh, again, a somewhat uh, pointed statement in the wake of the uh, European civil wars that broke out after uh, the, uh, the Protestant Reformation. Um, he does, uh, he, he does offer some uh, rather pointed parallels in, uh, in, uh, in portraying these natives versus Europeans. And you can see, uh, in the background, how Montaigne is thinking about these things when he talks about the homes of the Peruvian Indians and how they, uh, they, they tend to travel around from place to place with great regularity. And he makes mention of how, well, you, you visit one village, uh, um, at one point and then you go away for a little while and you come back a few weeks later and you realize the village, which they're still calling by the same name, is now in a different place. It's just a few miles away. And he remarks also that, well, a lot of the homes are in fact built of the same materials and the entire village looks exactly the same. It just moves. Uh, he, he describes how the natives tend to travel around with large pieces of wood and lumber that they just reassemble in different places. And uh, when reading this, one can't help but be struck by, well, the notion of property, the notion of um, uh, pride in one's uh, material goods. Uh, and how uh, these people, these natives, seem to see that as a fairly fungible uh, um, quantity. And you contrast that to, let's say, uh, Montaigne's coaches, where he lambasts the Europeans for spending so much money and so much concern on the uh, accrued uh, the, on the accretion of material goods, on showing off, on, on, on displaying their wealth so conspicuously to set themselves above one another, and often quite illogically in Fontaine's view. And here you get the sense in Delary's view as well. The, um, um, he throws out all sorts of little uh, mentions here and there about uh, the, uh, the the economy of uh, of the people of the of, of the uh, the treatment of material goods. He is a little taken aback at one point when uh, when he goes and meets a new tribe and then they start like you know stripping him and you know he's like okay well you want my shirt sure I guess and he's a little bit uncertain um, and the um, the uncomfortable nature of he's not quite sure how to deal with this uh, he is traveling with an interpreter he makes a point of mentioning the fact that he has an interpreter 
throughout, which is a notable uh, exercise in, uh, in well, social science. He is not uh, claiming to be particularly expert in, uh, in the language, so he's being quite honest that, okay, everything I'm saying, I'm getting through an interpretation, so it is at some remove. It is not necessarily first-hand knowledge, uh, which is significant in, uh, in ethnographic studies. He does have a little bit of fun with the uh, uh, with a scene where he describes how he told everybody's name and his name apparently, uh, whereas they had difficulty with you know, his first name, Jean, uh, his last name apparently in their language meant oyster. And he, uh, he, he got a big kick out of that. And he, uh, he had them call him Big Oyster for a little while, which is a fun little nickname. And it's a very human scene. Uh, you can see the humor coming out in this, both uh, the humor of the scene, you know, just sort of chuckling along as you're reading, but also the humor of the people, the humor of the natives who were laughing too. They thought that this was pretty funny. Um, and Larry, of course, makes a, uh, a, a nice little reference in there about how uh, you know, Cersei had never metamorphosed a man to uh, into an oyster so so well as I was, or something like that. Um, uh, and there, it's a reference to uh, to the Odyssey. So again, as a good Renaissance man, he is uh, very conscious of and very well uh, educated in the classics, the these uh, these great Greco-Roman uh, works of literature are always sort of uh, in his back pocket to pull out. Uh, he does have, he does describe a scene where he talks about cannibalism, where he walks up and he sees uh, chunks of flesh on a grill. And there's a very disturbing scene where, uh, where he describes how someone, he was sitting around in a, uh, in a group at this uh, barbecue and somebody walked up with a, uh, with a severed human foot and offered him a bite. <laughs> and he was a little disturbed by this. And the, uh, the scene actually plays out in, and, and he teases it throughout in a very uh, suspenseful and literary way. He describes how he was just completely freaked out by the cannibalism, uh, understandably, and he felt very threatened and he was paranoid the whole time he was there and he couldn't, you know, he, he couldn't relax and he certainly couldn't, you know, uh, shut his eyes and go to sleep that night. When his interpreter showed back up, his interpreter had apparently disappeared for a little while and he assumed that he had been abandoned to be eaten. Uh, but when the interpreter came back uh, and started translating back and forth again, uh, everybody thought it was very funny that he was so, so paranoid. Apparently they were just trying to have some fun with him and uh, they didn't mean any harm. Uh, they didn't, they certainly didn't mean to eat him. Uh, and they were all just trying to, you know, uh, be polite hosts and everybody had a good laugh at it. And there again, you can see where he's sort of offering himself up in that scene as the dope who doesn't understand what's going on. And he's not afraid to play that role, which augments them, which augments the natives and gives them an opportunity to seem like they're very decent people, even as they're eating human flesh. So it becomes a difference of a difference of culture, certainly around the cannibalism issue, but uh, the common humanity of enjoying, you know, enjoying one another's company, enjoying a laugh, certainly, but just they were trying to uh, have have a nice time with him uh, and bond over that. And that sort of humanity is the real focus of the anecdote. And uh, again, you can't read that without the uh, without Montaigne's cannibals ringing in the back of your head. These things are always coming up. Um, and, and the basic humanity of the people is always overriding. He, he writes at one point, as for their natural fellow feeling, every day they distribute and present each to e each to each the venison, fish, fruit, and other goods and other good things of their country. And not only would a savage die of shame, so to speak, if he saw his neighbor lacking what he has in his power to give, 
but also, as I have experienced it, they practice the same liberality towards foreigners who are their allies. Um, which is significant because, okay, yeah, they're, they're very supportive of one another. They, they respect, uh, one another's humanity and they, you know, they're, they're treating their neighbor, uh, as, as well as they can, but significantly they're looking beyond those narrow tribal instincts to engage with the other, to engage with the foreigner, the outsider. And here again, you can see. Larry the Huguenot um, saying, you know, I, 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 I've been persecuted by plenty of Frenchmen and uh, my life is very difficult because of that. But he's pointing out to them, well, you know, they're nicer in some ways. They are less barbaric. They are less um, inhumane. Uh, these lesser types, these, uh, these crude people are in some ways more humane than we are. Um, and, and, and he says this explicitly, they took such pity on us that I cannot help saying that the hypocritical welcomes of those over there, over here, meaning Europe, who, who use only slippery speech for consolation of the afflicted is a far cry from the humanity of these people, whom nonetheless we call, quote, barbarians. And that is cannibals. That is Montaigne. That is him recognizing, the Larry recognizing, and Montaigne picking up on common humanity, the shared basic value of decency that can be acknowledged by all human beings, but that in certain respects is acknowledged uh, irregularly. And that social critique um, in, in the guise of a comparative history where he's focusing on one thing but trusting the readers to a certain degree and making it explicit in other points, to compare with their own culture and use that sort of reference as a way of critiquing your own culture and suggesting that, well, maybe we can do things just a little bit better. <laughs>